Hi, uh, my name is Dan Lo, and in this tutorial, I'm going to give you uh, an idea about the VTL loop. So this loop uh, structure in VTL has something to do with your project part two. So I hope you enjoy this video. Okay. First of all, you know, uh, let's take a look at this range. This time I uh, take it from the VTL basics. So I want to emphasize this for you to get you know started with your project part two. Okay, so first of all, the, the range means, for example, if I have a D variable, D that's the input variable D or D input signal, it's a standard logic vector two down to zero. Then the D tick range will specify the the range the the val the bits specified in D. So in the, in our example, the D range will have values starting from 0, 1, and to 2, okay? So you will obtain the attribute of the signal D that range, you know, is a predefined attribute that retain information about the signals, okay? So the single quote is often read as tick. So D tick, in, in this example, we put a D tick uh, range, yeah, right? So if we put it into a for loop in this example, and this for loop has to be inside the process. Okay, the process here. Okay, so in the process, uh, I have the uh, input from outside with a D, which is input to the entity. Okay, then output the will be an integer that ranges zero to three. In this example, this VCD or the module, what we are going to do is we want to count the number of uh, bits uh, with values high in the input vector. So obviously we can have only the value zero with no input bits uh, or high. Or one which is one input bits is high, two and three. Therefore we can have the output integer range from zero to three. Okay, so we specify this as the integer output data type and rate zero to three. If we do that, then the uh, VSD compiler will give you two bits uh, for the Q output bus. Okay. So in architecture, we can we only contain uh, one process starting from here, okay, to the end process here. Okay. So in this uh, example, we specify a variable num bits of type integer within the process. Okay. In the body of the process, of course, initially we set the num bits to zero. For the variable initialization, we use column equal, okay, because this is variable, not signal. If it's a signal, we use less than equal to assign signal value. Then followed by a for the for i, which is the uh, integer in the D range. So I will get a value of zero, one, two, or three. So a little bit over, if di is one, okay, then we add number of bits by one in this if uh, structure, and then we loop it over it. Okay, so once we've done this, then the output number of bits will keep in number of bits high. Okay, if it's high, then we sum it together, then we put the signal to the output Q. Okay, so now let's go back to uh, the actual programming. So in this example, I knew a project. Okay. So the new whatever project. Okay. Say uh, uh, VHDL loop test. Okay. Then click next. And then again, I select the vertex 5 and then XC5VLX110T, that's the device we have in the lab. And the rest will keep it as this. Okay, then next. Now we need a new source, which we're going to have a uh, VDL module. Okay, and this module is called uh, it's a loop test. Loop test. Okay. And then select next. Then this loop test will have an input to D, right? Which is a bus, so we see that input and then bus from uh, 
three down uh, two down to zero. Okay, and then output uh, output uh, uh, what is the output? The output uh, Q integer Q. Okay, where is this output? And then since it is the integer, so we will space by the data. Okay, say the next, and then finish, and then click next again, and then click next again, finish. Okay. So here's our code here. Uh, so we can uh go down a little bit to the code to make it bigger. So here's our code. So in the output, we space of out and then integer range 0 to 3. Instead of standard logic, modify it a little bit. Okay. And then inside the architecture, okay, in the beginning, we specify a process. And the process will take the D as input. Okay. Uh, See the syntax. Okay. So pass the oh we have variable. Okay. Uh num bits integer. Okay. So specify here. Variable num bits. Okay. Of type integer. Okay. And then begin and process. So in the past, in the process, uh, begin we set num bits to zero. Okay, so set num bits to zero. Uh, since this is integer type and this is a variable. Okay. Then we enter for loop for i in range. For i in uh, range. Uh, D range, D tick range, D tick range. Okay. Look. Okay. Then after that we have a uh, if else, right? If. So we check. Here we have, and look. And here we check, if, D sub i. Is equal to since this bit right one okay then uh num bits num bits plus one okay and if and once we done this for loop okay we may you know send the after the end loop we send the q to num bits after the end loop okay we send uh, num bit to the output Q and that's it so save it then first we check the syntax so it's gonna take a while so just you know, be patient okay now uh, the syntax is correct okay now we can synthesize this. Double click synthesize here. We synthesize this with the module. And watch the output window here. If anything wrong or any warning message, that sometimes you know, lead to disasters. So now, if you see the process is complete, so then you do that. And since we're going to simulate this, so what you can do is you generate the process synthesis. You know, then the video module will be ready for simulation so you will generate post synthesis simulation so once you've done this then you can follow my other tutorials to create a similar chain to simulate this module and again in this tutorial we uh, go over the loop so use the d tick range you know uh, to go over the possible bits in d so this is something to do with your uh, 8 by 2 facility decoder so Try to understand this new structure in the process, then apply this technique.
to your part two of the project. That's all I have today. Thank you for watching.